Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Horror Possession, a tabletop video board game. In the game, The Horror, you're going to be playing as a group of people, family members mostly, and a priest attempting to stop the possession of a young girl. The young girl, however, has just been become possessed, and now is going to attempt to move around the house and destroy and annihilate her family. You're going to go around trying to gather clues to find the memory of the lost girl that she had sacrificed for the demonic possession to take place. And if you can do that before time runs out, you will win the game. Will you become annihilated inside the House of Horrors, or will you be able to stop the possession of the little girl? Find out in the game The Horror right now. The game plays one to five players, and in the game you must start by playing with at least the priest. Everybody else can select whatever character they'd like, whether it be the mother, the boyfriend, the nurse, etc, etc. Once you've gathered a character board, then I'll place the main game board down in the middle of the table. Go ahead and shuffle each of the three decks of cards. Uh, but before you shuffle the clue deck, go ahead and take out all of the orange cards. These are the cards that represent memories of the different locations in the house. Set aside them, shuffle them up, and take one away and hide it and place it underneath the board. The rest of them, make sure that you don't know which one that one is, are going to get shuffled back into this deck here and placed onto the game board. Place every single player that is playing the game in the middle of the game board in one of the eight spaces with the horror signature on it. Then go ahead and place the young girl in the front room, of, uh, in the location of her bedroom. It should be the front area, basically just before the door entrance opens. Then place each of these little hidden markers with the question marks on the spaces with question marks on them. Each character's character board is going to come with a card. It's going to come with a number of life based on the number of players. When you're playing with three players, you're going to get full health. Four, you'll get less than one less. And then five, you'll get two less. You're also going to get ability tokens on the player's card. It will dictate how much spaces it moves, how much HP that it has, and finally, how many energy they have. Take those markers and place them on the ability area. The priest is going to be the one that starts with the book, the exorcism book. You'll give that to the priest specifically. And then after that, the last thing you need to do is take the possessed board. This is the little girl, and she's what you're trying to defeat throughout the game. Give each of these little exorcism markers to the girl. There should be 10 in total. The rest of the tokens can be set aside, specifically these purple chalices here, which will help you exercise the rooms. If you're utilizing, whether it be standees or the miniatures here, if you take a side and put away the other ones, I'm playing here with the miniatures, and leave the HP and any additional energy that you might get. The last thing is just take this die and place it somewhere within reach of all players. Once you've done that, the game's ready to go. So the horror doesn't play exactly like other board games. This is a video board game, and so to start this game, as opposed to just the first player beginning their turn and proceeding clockwise, you're actually going to go ahead and start the video. You can play that on your TV, tablet, or screen of some sort, and it's going to tell you when the game begins. When that happens, then the first player will begin their turn. The first player's turn is going to start by them moving. Your movement is based on your player card, and you're going to have three stats, movement, HP, and your energy. Below is going to be your action that you can take as a special ability in the game. When you move, you can move up, down, left, or right. And you can move the number of spaces based on your card. And you can choose to stop as well. But when you stop, that's going to end your movement, and you will not be able to move again with your basic movement. Moving on the game will allow you to land on specific locations that can give you unique clue cards. They're these little spaces that have green markers. And when you do, you'll flip over the card, or flip over the marker, and take the card. And these cards can be played on your turn, and you can have no more than two. This, card, this card's marker here is going to stay red until the little girl walks into the room, and I'll explain more about that later. Additionally, when you're moving, you might pick up the prayer book. Now, in this case, and in this scenario, the exorcist starts with it, but if he ever passes away, he'll have to drop the book, and somebody will have to get it in order to finish the game. 
During your movement, you can take a number of actions, and one action is to play the clue cards that you gain. Of course, the other is to land on the space with a clue card. You can trade with a player that is adjacent to you, and you're gonna be able to exercise rooms. As you gather clue cards, there are gonna be these, basically these brown or orange cards that you'll draw, which will have certain locations printed on the bottom of them. You'll have to walk into that room and play the card. And when you do, you'll take one of these purple chalice markers and place it in that room. That will tell you two things. One, that the room that you've placed this in is not the hidden room. And additionally, whenever the little girl walks into that room, they are going to take one damage. And whenever the little girl has no damage left, that's how you'll finish the game off. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can activate one of your abilities. Your abilities are going to be located on the bottom of your card, and they'll do things like letting you move after three spaces, or exercising the little girl by making them move and lose an HP if they're within three spaces of the exorcist. And there are others that the characters are going to have. The other thing that you can do is you can donate cards to players and create the final exorcism. The final exorcism is when you have realized what card the hidden card is. You can never look at this card here until you choose to do the final exorcism. But the way it works is after you place a number of chalices, you can either make a guess or be 100% certain based on the cards that you've looked through in this clue deck. You'll walk into one of the rooms, then you're going to say, I'm going to complete the final exorcism. The final exorcism requires three things. One, that the possessed girl has no HP. Two, you're going to need to have the prayer book. And you're also going to need to make sure that this is the last action of the game and be inside the room itself. When you say, okay, I believe it's the dining room and you'll flip this card over while being in the dining room. And if it is, you win the game. If not, it's an instant loss. And those are the only two ways the game will end, other than if all players lose their HP. Throughout the game, if a player were to lose their last point of HP, they're going to be out of the game. So there is player elimination. Additionally, in this game, after you've moved and taken any actions that you possibly can or want to, you're going to need to roll the die. This die here will do one of two things or nothing. One, it could be a horror action, which you'll have to draw a horror card and do something like move your character seven spaces towards the possessed girl. Or it might be lose an HP point or discard any misery card. It could be instead a door action. The door is what moves a little girl from doorway to doorway. In this case, it'll say to move to the garden. So the good girl will have to go to the entrance of the garden. When you roll the die, and when you have to take a door, you'll check to see if you are in the room of the girl. If at the end of your turn, you will lose one HP if you're in that area and only at the end of your turn. Otherwise, if she happens to walk on your space, then you are going to get to move three spaces and you're going to take damage. So there's only two main ways you'll take damage other than horror cards and the video. After you have rolled the die, you're going to pass your turn and it'll go to the next player. They're going to move, perform any actions they can, go into locations, drawing cards, playing cards, activating their abilities, trading with each other and exercising rooms, and then they'll roll the die, check to see what happens and pass. As the video progresses, there are two different things that can happen. There's going to be either a noise or a scream. And when that happens, when it's your turn, you stop whatever it is you're doing. Your turn is gonna end and you're going to follow along with the video. Eventually the video will tell you what to do. Maybe it'll say to draw a clue card. Not likely. Draw a horror card, very possibly, or simply take damage. In which case you will do whatever the video says to do, and then it'll be the next player's turn. And this will proceed throughout the game until either A, the video ends, or B, you're going to have to uh, have everybody lose all their HP, or C, if you can complete the final exorcism and exercise the possessed. And if you're able to do that, you will win the game. And that's pretty much how the game is going to go. Moving, rolling, passing, until the video ends, or you complete the objective, or the game just straight up gets you.
The Horror Possession is a video board game and it's similar to the game Atmosphere, but instead of Atmosphere's gatekeeper. Very well, you've brought me here. So you will play by my rules. When I call on you, you will answer, yes, my gatekeeper. I assume you all have a number, or are you too stupid to even get that far? You are dealing with the little girl. Now, Atmosphere is a comedy horror game, and it is a party game. It's basically a joke. The character makes fun of you. Stop! Whose turn is it? Answer! I want you to tell us all your middle name. Come on, we won't laugh. Tell us. <laughs> Say what? You're kidding me, right? What a stupid name. No wonder you never get any dates. <laughs> the character will kind of interact with you guys and you have to say, yes, gatekeeper and that kind of a thing. This game is definitely more on the horror theme. The video is 100% horror oriented. The little girl is going to be popping out with a knife. There's going to be blood and there's going to be jump scares along the way. The entire creepy soundtrack as the video moves throughout the house throughout the entire video. Going to be interactive with this game board of you yourself moving throughout the house exercising rooms dealing with horror cards and trying to complete the final exorcism so the thematic aspect of the game is definitely different but the, the idea of a video game that is a video board game that is timed is very similar in that regard and i love those style games this is a quick dexterity game. You are going to be rolling the dice quickly, taking your turn as quickly as possible, and trying to strategically think of what room you need to go in next, what room the girl is likely to go into next so you can avoid it, and where you're going to need to go to collect these clue cards so that you can utilize them throughout the game. And in addition to that, also be able to play them to exercise rooms, so slowly filling up the board with these purple markers to determine where it is on the game board that the final room is. The way the memory of the girl that she kind of gave away to become possessed is so that you can bring her back. This is a highly thematic horror board game, and it is fun. It is enjoyable. It is a classical style game, though. Instead of rolling to move, at least you get to have your own unique movement. But you're going to be doing a lot of dice rolling, and of course, a lot of randomization is going to be input into this game as to where the girl moves. Now, there is, of course, mitigation. There is, of course, a lot of choice, and that makes it a very exciting experience. Throughout the game, there's a lot of actions and strategy and players are going to be yelling at each other, telling them what to do and where to go and working together. But the end result, your turn is going to be your responsibility. And also, your turn might not even be your turn because the video might gong, in which case you'll have to follow along. I really, really dig video style board games. They're very unique. I own, I own the only two that I know of and I'd like to see more of them come out. So I was very excited when I heard about this game, personally requested this game because I thought it was going to be a lot of fun and it was. I enjoy the chaos and the randomness and just all out fun as players are chucking dice, telling players, go hurry fast, the timer is running out. The clock is ticking down faster. The, the, the speed ramps up, the music gets more intense, and that just provides for a great thematic experience. If you're going into this one thinking it's going to be a highly strategic, in-depth game, you're probably going to want to pass. That is not what this game is. This is kind of a party game with a horror theme, intense and psych psychedelic, psychological type of horror game, and it's quite enjoyable. It plays kind of like a classic game, though, and if you're expecting some super modern aspects, it's not going to be here. 
I do love the fact that they added player abilities and options to trade and not having to roll to move and all that, but there is still player elimination in the game. Luckily, the game has an endpoint, and normally speaking, you don't just instantly lose this game. You'll have plenty of time and only miss out on a little bit if you do get eliminated personally. I love this game. It is a solid choice. If you're looking for a game like Atmosphere with a horror style or horror theme that's very, um, you know, and unnerving, uh, then you're gonna enjoy the possession. Uh, it's it's super, super good. I, I really highly recommend this game if you're the type of person like I am who likes horror games with intense video aspects. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Horror Possession. If you're interested in this video, or this game I should say, go ahead and take a look down below in the link. There is a crowdfunding campaign so you can go ahead and purchase this game. This is a prototype, so there are going to be additional videos. Uh, maybe additional things you can do in the game. I couldn't tell you, but from what's here, it's it's still excellent. If you want, we do a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can come and watch us play games just like this one. And in fact, I would like to play this live because I feel like this would be really cool and re really interactive watching this game played. So we'll see if we can actually make that happen. If you'd like, you can also hit the subscribe button. Subscribe and maybe the bell notification if you want. Pushing that button does greatly help us out. It shows people are interested. It shows people that we want to keep making more videos. So I really, really do greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to unpossessing a little girl with you next time.